Hello, everybody. My name is Colt. Thank you all for being here for my portfolio critique. Um, I'm excited to show you some of my work. Uh, let's start with who I am, this lovely individual. Um, a little bit about me personally. Um, I love to learn. I love learning new things. I love the process that is involved with learning, whether it's from a YouTube video, a book, some other thing. Um, I really like to be outside. I'm a big fan of the outdoors, whether it's something really light, like throwing a Frisbee or something more intensely recreational, like riding a bike or going on a hike or going on a run. Um, a big, big fan of being outside. And another thing I've learned personally about myself in my time here at Barry is that I have a strong value for good teamwork. Um, I really do appreciate being a member of a good team and really loathe the bad teamwork. I have learned that about myself. Um, and I think that it is something that uh, Barry has helped cultivate within me. A little bit about who I am professionally. I am a creative technologies major. I have minors in business and economics to explore some of my other interests. And I have various experience through the LifeWorks program, whether it was coming in my freshman year, cutting the grass on the soccer fields, or my sophomore and junior year working my way into residence life, being an RA and then a head resident, and this year being a lab assistant, um, which has been a really exciting and fruitful experience for me. Um, I have a growing passion, growing passion for the educational experience. That is an area professionally that I have enjoyed getting into a little bit being a lab assistant, but also would like to get into more moving forward. Um, my theme that we'll be discussing today is that, or my theme is designing and developing experiential educational technologies to promote a robust learning outcome. And so to get into that, we'll talk about meaningful work, the moment you've all been waiting. Number one, to get it off, um, this is a project called Santa Station, and it was made for um, CRT 399, the Intermediate Design Studio. Um, to give some background, some context, um, this was the fall of 2020 after the spring of 2020, when we were still figuring out how to live in a COVID world. Um, the purpose of this project was to understand a campus-wide health practice, one specific health practice that was hand sanitizing and how we could educate staff and students how to be healthier during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the way it worked, it simply just tracked people who were walking into the dining hall, how many people walked in and whether they were sanitizing their hands as they were walking. Um, some of the knowledge gained from this experience were applied during this experience. Um, we have some PCB design, very introductory from that that I didn't know a lot about. Some furthering of my knowledge of 3D modeling, 3D printing, as you see in the top left image. Some Arduino programming using some sensors that we had not had the experience to use before. Um, but the big two for me are these bottom two, the collection and display of meaningful data and conveying the story. Um, I had never really worked on a project where I had to collect data before, much less display it in a meaningful way. Um, throughout this process, throughout this project, I got to embark on the experience of building a touchscreen kiosk so that way people could interact with this information and developing a website with my partner. Um, I had a partner for this project, Thomas Harlan. Um, so we developed a website to display this data to try and be able to create a, to be able to create the experience of informing people about what was going on around campus. Um, and with, through that, we tried to convey the story from the data that we got. And the story here is really shown in this graph. This is probably the graph and the data that I'm most proud of. Um, this is tracking how many students were entering the dining hall and the percentage of sanitization rates as students were um, entering the dining hall. And really the thing that we inferred from that we were able to infer from this graph was that if you saw somebody else sanitize their hands, you were more likely to be incentivized to sanitize your hands. So we could create that experience and convey the story that when you sanitize your hands, it matters because the next, the next person in line is more likely to sanitize their hands as well. So it's not something that's just, you're, it's not something you're only affecting yourself. You're affecting camp the campus health as a whole. Um, so that is the Santa Station. The second project on the list and on the docket is the Exoplanet Explorer. This is a project made for CRT 300B. Um, it is important to note this is not a hackathon project. This was a project that I made for CRT 350. Um, the Educational Technologies Abroad course, um, the Norway Study Abroad course that I will unfortunately not being able to attend and embark upon implementing this technology. But either way, Let's talk about it a little bit. Um, the purpose of this project to educate students about spectroscopy, which is a process that used by um, lots of agencies to filter light um, to, uh, to understand things. Specifically, it was a process, it was understanding how light can be filtered to understand um, the solar planets, planets in other areas, like in other solar systems or outside of our own solar systems. Um, and it was trying to teach this through an engaging activity. Um, so this is kind of the, the hero image of everything compiled together. On this slide, we have some more specifics to kind of talk about the activity itself. 
Um, the way the activity works, you have this very jumbled image. That's your planet that you're trying to explore. You would use the telescope with some kind of light filter. Um, we used red and blue to then, you can't see it as well as I would like, but to unscramble the image by filtering out all of the red and leaving the color of the, the leaving the, the color that is not red. So in this case, it's blue and it's exposing you can barely see the word neon here. That's the, those are the elements that you're looking for. Um, that's kind of how the activity works. Um, it was designed for middle schoolers. So it was, we decided to keep it very simple and not have lots of colors going on, but really focus on like one color at a time. Um, we have two different planets for each color. But the knowledge gained applied for this activity. Um, I learned how to plan a lesson. I had never really done lesson planning before. Um, so this one was just one lesson, one activity. Um, but that was something I had never had to do. So it really stretched me in that way. Um, my partner, Heather Kobeck and I had no experience using Photoshop. So that was really interesting to pick a project that was largely dependent on having Photoshop skills. Um, a little bit more um, of an engagement with the 2D design, cutting out the, the filters and the actual like components to the telescope as well. And then once again, furthering my, my knowledge to, of how to convey the story, conveying the story through the lesson of there are planets out there and this is how we can understand them even though they're really far away and we can't actually send people to those planets um explaining to a middle schooler like you can still understand a lot about a planet just because of the life that's coming from it so that is the exoplanet explorer that was a really fun project to get to work on and i think largely encapsulates most of the pieces or all of the pieces of my theme um and number three bringing in this is the the largest project i've had the, the experience of working on. Um, this is the Autobot. I've worked on it both for my honors thesis and for my capstone project. Um, and we'll speak to both of those. Um, the Autobot, workshopping new names, got a few ideas, but that's for another time. Um, the purpose of the Autobot is to teach student teams about the underlying principles operating autonomous vehicles. What I mean by the underlying principles is simply like how they work with whatever input sensors they have. So for us, it's a camera, how the, the computer, in our case, it's the Raspberry Pi, can take that input from the, from, from the camera and then understand, make a decision and then tell the hardware how to act appropriately. So that's kind of the principles that we were trying to educate and how, to, how it all fits together, how it all works. Um, this was a really exciting experience for my honors thesis. And a lot of what I learned is, are things that were not related to the like, the hard like, oh, how to code this way, how to program things and how to build. It was a lot of the more, a lot of the more fruitful learning, I think, came from things like learning how to write an academic research paper. I had never done one at length like I had for my, for my honors thesis, how to write to receive grant funding. We were lucky enough to receive um, the Curbo grant. Um, so thank you to the Curbo committee for that. Um, but how to write in a professional way to show that like this research can be meaningful and we, we want to convey that to others as well. Um, the concept to creation process. This is a process not unfamiliar to most creative technologies makers. Most of them have to learn how to come up with an idea and then implement that idea somehow. But this was the first time I think I had really taken a project that I was not sure if it was going to work and had to take a leap of faith of like, this could go vastly differently than I intended. This could not go well in the classroom um, and really learning how to, to figure out if, it, if I thought it was going to work to make a lot of hypotheses and then implement that going forward. Um, I really learned how to make a learning experience um, more than just the lesson plan, the idea of like, the last project, the Exoplan Explore, um, Explore, coming up with a lesson plan and have to teach something. This was not one lesson taught for one class period and then moved on from. This was over multiple weeks in a course, developing a learning experience from having to build the Autobot to programming the Autobot to then competing with the Autobot, really how to encapsulate all of that as a whole. Um, and then also learning how to develop curriculum. I had never developed curriculum before. Um, and that was an interesting experience for which is vitally important to developing an educational technology is how will you assess the education that you're trying to do. Um, it was really interesting because I was assessing my peers and those I was in class with, but largely that was a good um, exercise in stretching my brain in a new way. So that was really exciting. Um, an important thing to talk about with this is the impact. This is not a picture of the Autobot, this is a picture of the auto cart. Um, some of the impact that we were able to see from this thesis project is that the Autobot implemented as a prerequisite to the auto cart um, what allowed for student groups in the CRT 330 vehicles course to program the, a large scale vehicle better. So we saw this transition from the small scale technology, learning a lot on the small scale technology, getting rid of the technology bottleneck as we deemed it, where 
all the student teams were fighting for this one part. So giving them all their own Autobot and then being able to let them implement that knowledge on a larger scale. We saw a lot of success. The last time the vehicles course was offered when it was just the auto cart um, and not the Autobot and the auto cart, um, student teams were able to program the auto cart to go upwards of 400, 500 feet. And this time our leading student team was able to program the auto, um, the auto cart to go upwards of 1200 feet. And the class average was a lot closer to 400. So that was a lot, that was very impactful for me to see. Um, and I think speaks to the development of this technology and its implementation. Um, a lot of the knowledge gained and applied for capstone specifically relating to the Autobot. Um, I once again, feel like I had already had an idea of how to do things like 3D modeling and how to build things. So it was a lot of learning on the other, like some more soft skills that I think make a project go from being good to really good or good to great. Um, so the impl implementation of critical feedback last fall when we implemented the Autobot in CRT 330, um, there were a lot of things wrong with it. We learned a lot of things that were really bad and how to, to make them better. So this, um, these are all pictures representing that. Um, so this top left image is the old wheel mount. Um, the way the wheels get mounted into the Autobot is they kind of get sandwiched in between that top chassis piece and another chassis piece. Um, they, previously you could not tighten down the, um, the chassis all the way because it created too much friction in the system. So we were able to eliminate that a lot by shrinking this piece a little bit, um, sizing it up a little bit differently and adding some springs so that way it's always centered. And that way you can now like tighten down the chassis as much as you can as you would intuitively without creating so much friction in the system that you can no longer turn. Um, and then some critical feedback also that we saw was that this chassis piece is almost symmetrical, but not quite. So when students were building the Autobot, it created a lot of issues with them trying to build it using the wrong side and realizing like, oh, this is not symmetrical. It just looks like it's symmetrical. So the importance of adding things like signifiers um, so that way students didn't have to go through that struggle when they were building the Autobot again. Um, I learned about the importance of the iterative process. I think most CRT majors will tell you it is important to fail forward, fail fast. I think this was something that I really got to kind of harp on a lot and really was, it was very, very important for me during the implementation of my capstone. So learning about making all of these different wheel mounts to find which one works best and doing that very quickly. Um, modeling all of these components in Fusion um, so that way it could like, and then checking and cutting and testing to see if it works, really iterating on that. And then finally, one of the biggest things is the technology accessible. Um, we wanted to make the, one of the goals for this was to make it accessible so that way somebody with basic, with some basic prototyping tools with those resources could make the Autobot and implement it to teach educational technology or to teach autonomous vehicle technology elsewhere. Um, so this is all, all of the DXF files to cut up all of the acrylic pieces that you see with the Autobot, mm -hmm. all of the, the um, STLs and G code files to 3D print the, the wheel mounts that we've adjusted and stuff like that, as well as a build guide, a build of materials. Everything has been uploaded to a GitHub repository and is live so that way somewhere else the Autobot could be implemented if somebody so desired. And that was really important to me was making it a play, a, a technology that could be used elsewhere. Um, yeah, what's next for me? Um, I'll be working here on campus, on the mountain campus, not here on the campus, um, as a facilitator for Winchick Teams. Um, I'm really excited about this opportunity. Winchick Teams does teamwork and leadership development within corporations and other clubs, institutions, whatever, anybody who is willing to come and seek their counsel, I suppose. Um, one of the things that brought me to them was the fact that they also do educational experiences. So they don't just come in with a slideshow about why teamwork is important or why leadership is important, but instead they do various activities ranging from a few hours to multiple days, three day activities that really designed to put teams through tests to show them where they could be better teams to put leaders in positions where they are, are struggling and the team is not working as well to try and bring that out to make a more cohesive um, environment for the team to play. Um, so just kind of getting back to that educational experience. I'm super excited. And that is what's next for me. Um, once again, thank you to the committee. I know it is still early, but I know you guys will be here far longer than you should be today. So I appreciate that very much. And I will now open the floor up to any questions.